Hello lovely people. I welcome you once again to Bright and Clarice channel. Thank you all for clicking. This is episode 2 on a 7 bedroom house that we are putting out for our lovely subscriber. Alright, so in your view is a beautiful 3D representation of the house. It is a huge house. This is a mansion. Okay, I did mention in episode 1 that we're going to change the roofing. Okay, this is um, a decision from the client and whatever my client says is what we do. Are you with me? And everything is communicated, you know, so that everybody can be on the same page. In your view, is a total breakdown of the estimate that we prepare and we've been paid from foundation and superstructure. In fact, we are doing all the project at a go, you understand? And so we don't have time at all. There's no time to wait. Uh, we don't want to waste our time. So let's school ourselves a little bit. I welcome you back to Oyarifa. Okay. In episode one, we did learn some few things about architectural drawing and structural drawing. And structural drawing deals with details, beams, and columns, whilst the architectural deals with the block plan, block plan and then the setting out. Sorry. The block plan and then the setting out. Are you with me? Yes. Before that, architect is expected to you know inspect the land before they put up a drawing in most cases it doesn't happen that way we always speak to the architect and we design but under normal circumstances even when the drawing have been designed the architect has to visit the land know the shape of the land it is very very important whether it's a sloppy land a water log whatever the circumstances may be. And even at a point, if they have to do a soil testing, it is important. And then also, once they do the soil testing, they know how fragile is the soil. Can the soil hold the building that we are putting up? Are you with me? All these, we don't do. Most of us, we don't do. Eh, hey, consider that, mommy. Go you say, mommy. You understand? So... For me, I take the extra mile to know that, okay, let's do a side visitation. Let's just see the nature of the land. We might not have instrument to do the testing unless you go for building permit. It is with the responsibility of the permit department. You know, since they are taking money, they have to come and do the soil testing because you are paying money for that. And then they do the soil testing and give a report that, the house that we are going to give you permit for, it is okay to build the house on the land. And the depth as being stipulated by the architect in the drawing, which is in the structural drawing, it is the right depth based on our inspection and observation of the land. This is the, the responsibility of our permit department. But none of these are done. They just sit in the office, take money, and grant permit. There's just quite a few of them that actually take the time to come to the site and do all these feasibility studies. Are you with me? It is very, very important. And therefore, I entreat each and every one that have taken up the YouTube space that make sure that when you're building for people, take the extra mile. Are you with me? Make sure that the amazing that is putting up the house really understands the drawing, has gone through the structural drawing, and know the depth that they are supposed to go. And also, if they notice that the land is a clay, what are the necessary steps they need to take in order to ensuring that the house sit properly and to avoid cracks, especially areas where they are clay? They need to ensure they avoid that. On this particular land, I noticed that it is a land where they used to, you know, get sand from. They have an is it winnowing? Winnowing? They have a name for that though. I'm not that good in English. So they used to, you know, get soil or sand from this area, and that has also affected the land badly. It's not a complete waterlogged. 
Why? Because the land is a flat land and when it rains, because there are no drainage systems, the water tends to stay on the land. Are you with me? Whatever you see in the trenches right now is due to um, previous heavy downpour. Yes, so once it is dry, the water will dry off. Going to the back of the land, we notice that that portion is also a little bit soft. There's moist, okay, and that is also due to the fact that there's been a fencing. Once there's a fencing, there's no drainage. So when it rains, the water stays there. It has no passage to, you know, extend a stream. And therefore, we have these water stagnants in some portions. And therefore, we are taking all the necessary measures to ensuring that by the time the house is completed, everything is strong and firm. So this is a, just a, sing, a double story. In America, they call the ground floor a first floor and then the upper one a second floor. In Ghana, we call the ground floor a ground floor. <laughs> and then the upper floor a first floor. So this is just a ground floor in a first floor building. So mostly the required depth is three feet, six inches, but we decided to go extra, you understand? And the columns, we decided to go a little bit extra because of the nature of the land. So columns, we had to go five feet, the whole distance. So if the foundation trench is three feet, then column will be two feet down. You understand, two feet down so that it can hold because we're going to do what we call branding. The branding might take about some few inches and therefore the columns will now be about say one foot, maybe four inches, you understand. Together with the, uh, how do you call it, with the trench uh, block work, then that is coming to about four feet, four inches. Are you with me? It is very, very important. If it's going to be about three stories, then four feet depth of the trench and then six feet for the column are you with me it is very very important most people will not agree because they want shortcut now when the depth increases iron rust increases but when that happens oh you're, you're trying to take my money nobody is trying to take we are doing the right thing for you you understand the project size is being shown on the screen okay it's, it's in millimeter and then in the middle it's brought to meter and then I decided to put it into foot. Most of us are good with the measurement of foot, the unit of foot. So it's 111.22 feet by 97.52 feet. That is huge. It no be joke. <laughs> it no be joke. So the house is really huge. Mm, it's really huge. So we are taking our time and ensuring that everything conforms to standard. We want to make our client happy and so we can also get more customers. Are you with me? Yes. Once we do it and you do it right, you see, whatever I'm doing, that is why I prefer to showcase it on my channel. If you ask me not to mention your name, that is fine because nobody will know. But some people have restricted me from showing whatever I'm doing for them on the channel. And sometimes it baffles me a little bit. Why? Because if I had not shown other people's video, you would not see it and ask me to build your house for you. You understand? Now, it should everybody restrict me from putting out their houses on the channel. Then what will I be showing? You understand? What will I be showing? We are putting up mega, mega project majority of them you know have said oh mr bright don't put it on the channel i said well why don't you say i shouldn't mention your name because for me i think that is the most security part of it taking your name out how are people going to know this is your house unless of course you tell them and we're not going to mention the location or you know pinpoint the exact location no we're not going to do that just like this one, I did not mention the client's name. All I said is the Oyarifa project for our lovely subscriber. You understand? And I think that is how it's supposed to be. 
but when you say don't put out my house on the channel um, so what will I be doing then if I don't have any video to show that is marketing I need a video to show so that people can see what we are doing are you with me we need a video to show the public that this is what we are doing in fact that is the main reason why we are here to help you people out there in the diaspora because of the scam the theft issue and the trust issue with families and friends because of that i have taken it upon myself to share this video on the channel that it can be done so you can see your house every day on the channel without mentioning your name how does that affect security you understand so i want you guys to you know rethink a little bit and do consider because me putting it out there it helps promote my channel and also retain my reputation and also give me more opportunity out there without that how are people going to see that oh mr bright is doing well and he's building houses for people he's not scamming people or he's not doing abc or oh, maybe they did a project they didn't do it well where we need to showcase it are you with me so my lovely viewers please don't put restrictions okay give us the opportunity to share and this is how people get motivated people are out there they are afraid but when they see such videos they get motivated you understand our fingers are not the same so they might not necessarily build the big house that we are building they might put something small but it's still what they can afford and they are happy about it and that is what i want to do i want to share it on the channel so that people will get motivated all the hardware people will get motivated that is all the purpose there is okay thank you so much for getting this across it has been on my chest for so long but i hope that all my viewers that are listening those that have restricted me they will give us a second chance to be able to share those wonderful um, buildings that we are putting up mega mega project you understand mega mega project so the trenches are being dug it's usually going to take some time it might take a week or two depending on how soft or how hard the land is the challenges we have to face due to rainfall yes we had a lot of rainfall here so they have to do a lot of reworks we have to do a lot of reworks but hopefully we were able to pull through and the project has gone so far so you will be coming your way giving you details of exactly what has happened and i believe you're all learning and taking clue from what i'm sharing with you okay the depth is going to be three feet six inches but we decided to make it um three feet and then well, four feet for the columns are you with me four feet for the columns trenches is three feet so we have to go a little bit further okay yes as you see the land is very hard at the surface it looks soft but going down is extremely hard uh -huh. and then the waters you see it in the, in the trench somewhere is due to the rain and then also this area as you can see it's a bit of a moist here this is due to stagnant water you understand and so we'll get all we we'll get rid of it and then we will move on with our concrete casting so this is digging of the trenches day two which is episode two i'll be coming your way with episode three and let's see what happens in episode three if we're able to finish the the digging of the trenches and then doing our column work it is very expensive when it comes to digging digging the trenches is one and digging of the column is two you understand it is very very important all right so if you love this video please give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you've not yet and give it a thumbs up this helps the algorithm of youtube to spread it for wider audience from me to you shalom god bless you wherever you are bye bye